All right, we're talking here to Tom Steinbeck, also known as Dad. Dad, tell us a little bit about the Steinbeck history, how it all started. Uh, <clears throat> the hand-me-down uh, stories uh, that I heard when I was a little kid, uh, Niels Steinbeck, he was my uh, great-grandfather, and in Sweden, uh, they lived in a on a small island about quarter of a mile away from the mainland of Sweden and uh, to get the light uh, there was no bridge across at that time so to get across the, with their livestock to the mainland why well, they put them in a, a big rowboat what over here they'd call a river scow and they'd row them across well then they'd buy livestock horses or cattle on the mainland and uh, do the same thing, take them back to the island. Well, the ones on the mainland wouldn't jump in the boat, so my great-grandfather had a method of doing it uh, with the end of a, a harness tug. He'd have the leather part for his hand and had the dangling chain, he'd hit him in the pasture. That'd make him jump in the boat. Just uh, get him across. So he did that. He was good at that and trained a lot of animals that way. So when the Civil War was over, uh, the Southern plantation guy, uh, guys that lost their uh, slaves got the idea that uh, they could get uh, Scandinavians from. Sweden, Norway, Denmark, and Finland, uh, they'd pay their fat passage to get here, but then they had to work a year to pay off their passage. So that's how my great-grandfather and uh, grandmother and uh, half the family was born in Sweden. And what were their names? Uh, the oldest, Maria was my great-grandmother's name. And then the, the firstborn were uh, girls, uh, and one was Hulda, and uh, well, I forgot. Uh, anyway, the boys, the oldest boy was Alban, and then there was Chris, and then my uh, granddad. And it's half of them, and she had about 14 kids. But half of them died in infancy. So uh, my great -gran my grandfather was born in 1873, and according to uh, the Bible, there's a boy uh, born after him. His name is Oscar in the Bible, and he lived about a year. And then there was a girl after that, and she died shortly after birth. So. Uh, when my great uh, grandfather got to as a Virginia planter, uh, the Swedes had never seen a mule before, and this uh, planter had a lot of balky mules. Uh, balky mules, one that he's just smart. He knows how to buffalo a person. But my uh, great grandfather used that method that he used on uh, getting the livestock to jump in the boat. So that, that took the bulkiness out of them and that made the mules worth a lot more money. So he, the story goes that plantation guy was buying as many bulky mules as he could. So uh, uh, Niels would, uh, could take the bulkiness out of them. Well, getting towards the end of the year, why, uh, uh, the plantation guy tell me, as you get them mules uh, down broke goods, you can have them to go west. Well, he'd sell them. <laughs> so uh, he, they called the big mule back in Virginia sugar mill. So he got a couple real mean uh, big sugar mills and said the same thing. Well, uh, he got them broke real good and then uh, another Swede said, no, you're, you ain't going to get them. He's, 
he he was showing them to another guy, trying to sell them. And anyway, so that he liked their mules so good, they got up in the night and left. They took the mules and uh, no wagon and, and uh, headed for uh, didn't have a cent to their name, and went as far as they could until they about starved to death. And then he started doing dray work. That's doing dray work is like hiring a nowadays a bulldozer or some machine to do the work. So they, they uh, survived that way. And then winter was coming on, they heard that uh, they needed uh, teams uh, uh, horses up in uh, northern Michigan to uh, snag logs out of the timber. And so they goes up there, well, uh, my great grandmother and the daughter, her daughters, they were good cooks. So they had a cook tent, and they would uh, have what you call a smorgasbord about every meal. So she is uh, the lumberjacks liked them Swedish pancakes they, she made. So uh, she's making good money that way. And then spring came; they can't, they didn't log up there on the kind of the uh, water. Uh, the ice would melt, and then the mosquitoes would eat, eat them up. So they heard there was needed teams at Omaha, Nebraska, to a greater railroad to Sioux City. So they headed to, uh, to Sioux City from northern Michigan. Well, by that time, he had uh, quite a few horses and mules accumulated. And uh, so they got to Sioux City, and they started grading uh, from Council Bluffs, it's 100 miles from Council Bluffs to Sioux City, but it happened to be an open winter. They was able to grade all all winter long. And uh, when they got to Sioux City, it was April 1867, uh, the same deal. She, uh, My great-grandmother had a cook tent, and uh, so the, fed the workers there, and there was more in, several contractors uh, grading, and uh, the, each contractor had to furnish a cook. Uh, so, but every, all the other guys from the other contractors were eating at, at the Steinbeck tent because of the good smorgasbord Swedish food. So uh, the mother contractors liked that because they didn't have to worry about keeping a cook. So they got to Sioux City uh, in April of 67. They started out of Omaha in the spring of 66. And uh, the story goes she had more money <laughs> in her pocket than he did with all his grading. And uh, she died in 1900. And uh, the she died. She died. She wasn't sick in bed. She, I guess she just dropped dead because she had her apron, and in her apron was full of I don't know how many thousands of dollars of cash that the undertaker Nelson he could have kept it because nobody knew it was there, and that Nelson's Nelson Burger now they buried all of us <laughs> since the whole family since then. And what was the, her name? Uh, Maria. Oh, that was Maria. Yeah. Okay, and then since 1900, uh, talk about since then, uh, who was alive and... Well, the, uh, when they started, uh, got to Sioux City, the, uh, their farm, farm was close to 80 acres. That, the farmhouse would be where fourth, you know, between fifth and sixth, and fourth street is the main downtown business district street, but that was, Sioux City started out on Perry Creek. That was the west end of the uh, business district at that time. So they, the early, bo the firstborns, they they put out on homesteads. The first homestead was east of Sioux City, about eight miles. And then they, the boys, they put up well, they, then the family moved to the homestead in South Dakota, Spink, 
that's where my grandfather was born in 1873, and my dad was born on that same homestead in uh, 98. And I had three great grandfathers homesteaded in South Dakota. And uh, so uh, the story goes that she was so frugal, my great grandmother, that uh, she'd walk. It'd be 25 miles from the homestead to Sioux City. She could have walked to Elk Point about four or five miles and took the train in, but she was, uh, she had walked <laughs> in the, uh, to Sioux City and then walked back. To, uh, she did some, I don't know, it was cooking or what she did, but she had some kind of job that made her money there during the week because the older girls, they were bit old enough, they took care of the, 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 the homestead while the, the elders were gone. Then uh, my granddad was a little kid. The first house was a dugout. It was uh, dug in a uh, pretty level there, and he dug down and used that dirt to cover the roof until he got a permanent house built. Well, my granddad was just a little kid, and they left him there by himself. A blizzard come up, and there was, they had a, either a newborn calf or a colt that my granddad got in a dugout to keep from freezing to death, but the mother got on top of the, they had a fence around it, but the mother got on top and fell through the roof and lit on the cook stove and broke it. Well, I, I, just, I got the, house, the stove that was replaced now, the wood-burning cook stove. And talk a little bit about what you remember about Elmer's dad, so your granddad. What was his name, Nils? Carl. Carl was my uh, granddad's uh, first name. He was about 6'1 and built like Paul Bunyan. Big hands. His hands were so big, he couldn't get them in his suit. He could have overalls, but a uh, dress suit. I remember when I was a little kid, they, in those days they never had a wallet. They had a purse, and they always carried it in the front pocket. And when I'm there, he'd always have me dig in his pocket to get that out. And uh, uh, he was so strong that I was at a, the Swedes, the Scandinavians had the Midsummer Festival out in Riverside Park, and one of their games was holding the anvil by the horn straight out. And he was the one that always won it. Uh, yeah, he, he was real powerful. Speaking of that, um, was there any athleticism at all in the Steinbecks oh, yeah. as far as what? Well, he my, my, uh, Carl's 65th birthday, he laid on his back prone was hands against his uh, uh, legs and he hopped right up. He just sprung right up without any help. And uh, yeah, he was athletic. Well, when he died, he had two garbage cans half full of stoker coal. And that, that killed him off right now. How old was he when he died? 74. How old was Elmer when he died? 69. 69 is a long time to live back then, wasn't it? Yeah, well, my dad lived longer, but he was a chain smoker when he was young. He quit when he was 42, but it still showed. He had a x-ray 20 years later, and it still showed up on his lungs. The doctor thought he still smoked. What did he die of? Heart failure. 